Hey singers, I'm Justin Stoney, the founder of New York Vocal Coaching, welcoming you to episode 22 of Voice Lessons Online. This is the show where passionate voice teachers from all over the world help us learn from some of the greatest singers of all time. Our singer today is one of the most gifted singer-songwriters of the century. His winning vocals, memorable melodies, and captivating lyrics always seem like fresh insights from a very old soul. It's our pal, Jason Mraz. not to love that. So let's go. Casey Velasquez is here to explore the symphony that Jason makes with his consonants. Hi everyone. I'm so excited to talk about Jason Mraz. In addition to his fantastic vocal technique, Jason really knows how to stylize his voice. One thing that he does is leans into and really articulates his consonants, especially on the onsets of his notes. Let's take a listen and hear this in action. And may you be as fascinating as a slab bracelet. May you keep the chaos in the clutter off your desk. May you have unquestionable health and less stress. Having no possessions, though immeasurable wealth. Kind of hurts to win. Kind of words do you say? Kind of turn. Awesome. We can hear Jason really leaning into consonants like his C's, B's, D's, G's, and it creates a really percussive, rhythmic, punchy effect that adds to his signature style that we know so well. In lessons, you can explore this as well by putting those consonants in front of vowels like ba, ka, gug, and kind of just explore what that feels like for you and your music. All right, thank you so much for having me again, and I will see you soon. Awesome, Casey. And next, Andy King. Tell us about how Jason breaks the vocal binary. I think Jason Mraz is one of the most underrated vocal technicians in pop music. He has tons of music that spans all kinds of qualities and skills, and he does them all effortlessly. He's an impressive vocalist who I've admired for a long time, and one of those things is his willingness and ability to play with the color and quality of his voice based on what he wants to do with it versus what he feels like he has to do because he's a man. Let's listen to a couple of examples. In the first clip, he and Rachel Yamagata sound almost identical in the color and texture of their voices. 
They're trading phrases back and forth, and you can hear them both playing with their ranges. In Pancakes and Butter, he's singing entire phrases in falsetto. He's not just popping into falsetto and then getting out. He's sitting in it. He's exploring it. The idea of all this is to point out the magic of the voice's ability to do so many different things and make so many sounds. Here's my challenge for you. I want you to explore a song in a key that stretches your voice into a range that you might not typically sing in. Push the limit of what you think you should or should not sound like and enjoy the new colors and textures you discover as you start to break the vocal binary. So good, Andy. And Nicolas or Mazabo, how does Jason do so much with so little? The vast majority of musicians usually need a whole band to be able to express their music. This is not the case of Jason Moraz, who with only his guitar and his voice is able to fill a whole stage. This is due to his great musicality, which compromise a quiet and attractive harmony and rhythmic accompanied by a very pop vocal melodies. All these together make the style of Jason Moraz something unique, placement to listen, and in my opinion, technical, but in a vocal and instrumental way. When you love someone, your heartbeat beats so loud. When you love someone, your feet can't feel the ground. Shining stars all seem to congregate around your face when you love someone. When you love someone. Great, sir. And Abby Payne, Jason really is a master of rhythm, isn't he? Jason Mraz maintain his easy breezy style while squeezing in a substantial amount of lyrics? One of the keys is his ease with and mastery of rhythm. Let's take a listen. I like to dance and it looks like this. Uh, I like to pop and lock and hit you with a little bit of robot. Gotta hit it, get it, love it, live it, get a little silly with the lyrical ridiculousness. Uh, I like to shake a leg. Uh, I like to nod my head. I like to walk into a party with a pirouette. A little move goes a long way, like a soul train line in the hallway. It's your way, my way, all day. So you notice he's having a lot of fun playing with different rhythmic variations in the verses, and he's using different accents of the beat on different words to emphasize them. Underneath it all is a really solid tempo. If you're tapping along, you can feel that he's not speeding up, he's not slowing down. Let's take another listen and see if you can hear where the underlying tempo is. Oh, every time I feel myself getting frantic, maybe too much coffee did it. I bump up the music, bump up the click. I pick up the speed, tell him deep in it. Then I gave it a hat tip and just like magic, I feel it come back and that my body's electric. I'm feeling elastic and super fantastic and flipping like an old gymnastics. So you notice he's tapping his foot as he plays often. Sometimes he sways a little bit. He's really connected to where that underlying beat is. And that's allowing him to play with rhythm, to have fun with those different variations. And they kind of float, they dance over that solid underlying beat. So if you want to have fun with rhythm, like Jason Mraz, be sure with any song you're working on, that you know where that steady beat is, whatever time signature it's in. Make sure you're feeling that. You can do that by tapping your foot. You can use that by dancing a little bit like he is. You also could try singing with a metronome, which he, maybe he's doing here. He's got those headphones on and maybe clicking the time. And either way, you can use that as a firm foundation to free up those rhythms and have fun. Thanks, Abby, and thanks to all our experts. I'm gonna share what I've learned from Jason in a moment, but first, here are some resources to make the vocal journey yours. To get to know the Voice Lessons Online team or schedule a lesson, visit voicelessonsonline.com. To get your copy of Justin Stoney's book, Sing Like Never Before, visit singlikeneverbefore.com. 
If you'd like a vocal course that you can do from home, check out the Voice Lessons to the World Vocal Course. Our 12-part program takes you on a journey from beginner to master level vocal exercises. Find it at voicelessonstotheworld.com. If you're a voice teacher looking to master your craft, join our worldwide community at voiceteachertraining.com. Finally, if you'd like free vocal tips sent to you each day, sign up at dailyvocaltips.com. One thing that I find very interesting about Jason Mraz is his path. He doesn't come from a long line of musicians. He never really had connections. He didn't grow up in New York, Nashville, or LA. He's just a guy who loves music, just like us. In fact, if I may say so, Jason's upbringing reminds me a lot of mine. Born in the middle of America, got into choir and theater in high school. Heck, both him and I even played Joseph. He studied musical theater in college until somebody handed him a guitar and he realized he could write songs. Point is, he didn't have a master plan. He wasn't aiming for stardom. He was doing something much more courageous than that. He was following his singing. You see, it's tempting to look for the easy way, especially these days. How can I hack it? How can I get the most views, clicks, likes? How can I be successful fast? But when you talk to true artists, they almost never think like that. Well, I didn't know it was life-changing at the time, but I remember the day I wrote I'm Yours, mm. and it all just was, it was like it was gifted to me. I was playing a little electric guitar, and playing on my favorite Bob Marley chords, almost emulating a reggae thing. and I wasn't writing about any girl or anybody in particular. I was basically singing to the great unknown and saying, make me an instrument, I'm yours. Singing to the great unknown. Make me an instrument, I'm yours. Now that's some great advice if I've ever heard any. So instead of focusing on the outcome, we can focus on the creation. And what happens when we do that? You feel transformed, you feel changed by it. Because you've just gone from the experience of I have nothing to I have something. You've just gone from Am I a creator? Can I create something too? I have created something! <laughs> and that's what we get as humans. That's what we get the opportunity to do, is to basically be vehicles for creation. Mm. And when we exercise that through art, we get to see it back on the canvas, or on the page, or on the recording tape. So it's, uh, I love art for that. And whenever I start to go down in mood, my wife goes, go create something. Hmm. You know, go write me a poem. And sure enough, just writing a poem, it's like, I have created something. And I, I get high again. So yeah, I still get uplifted and changed by hmm. making music. Wow. If you've ever listened to Jason Mraz and thought his music was spiritual, well, now you know why. Jason teaches us that it's best to not have a master plan. Sometimes it's best to listen to the master's plan. We'll see you next time for more Voice Lessons Online. Mm -hmm.